Hi, this is Dr. Gogas, Editor-in-Chief of USC Journal. And today I have the pleasure to have with me a very special guest, uh, Dr. D.W. Park from Asan Medical Center in Seoul, South Korea. Uh, Dr. Park obviously needs no introduction. I will just mention though that he is a very talented interventional cardiologist who specializes in complex PCI and more in particular in left main PCI, but also he is very well published. And together with Professor S.J. Park, they have both shaped the best current practices in left main interventions. Uh, Dr. Park recently uh, published the 10 year follow up of the main compare registry. And today he's here with us together to show us his great results and observations. And Dr. Park, uh, welcome to our episode. Thank you, thank you, Bill. And uh, this is a very honor to very pleased to present our listen to publish the publication about 10 year main compare registry according to uh, region location. Thank you. Right, right. So let's start. Uh, tell us about the design of the main compare registry. So uh, main compare registry is a, a prospective multi-center registry and include the real world uh, left main, uh, unprotected left main disease uh, underwent either PCI or bypass surgery at the 12 uh, expert center in Korea that was uh, enrolled between January 2000 to uh, June 2006. And the three year median follow up was published in New England Journal of Medicine 2008. And the five-year result was published in Jack 2013. And the two years ago, we published the 10-year result of the main compare real-world registry. I see. So uh, in this registry, you define the, base, the, the patients based on the anatomic location of the disease in the left main, either in the ostium, in the shaft, or the distal left main. Obviously, distal, distal left main bifurcation is a very complex anatomic entity. And uh, of course, provisional uh, one stent crossover is the main approach. But also recently, we have also two stent techniques. Tell me about your approach in distal left mains in Asan Medical Center. What defines complexity and what defines strategy as uh, either one stent strategy or two stent strategy? Yes, and uh, uh, as you mentioned, Bill, and uh, this is a very complex uh, question to interventional cardiologists. And uh, uh, although distal left main disease, uh, uh, distal left main was involved uh, angiographically or anatomical uh, complexity is different uh, among the various uh, you know, patients. So, and uh, still there was no definite uh, criteria for upfront uh, two stenting technique. and. Uh, I remember recently defined two trial confirmed the two stent technique is better than provisional stenting in terms of a TRR, a target vessel MI, TR, TRF uh, using the defined criteria. But the defined criteria is uh, one of the arbitrary criteria not uh, confirmed in the another registry. So uh, in uh, if I'm gonna summarize in ASAN team and we have uh, one of the expert uh, left main intervention in the world and uh, we freely prefer the two stenting, uh, especially in case of a true distal left main bifurcation region and the suck ostium is big and uh, very tight and the mm -hmm. diameter stenosis more than 70% also involved more than uh, the 10 millimeter is a long region. And uh, uh, that was uh, simply case. regarded as to be uh, not treated well with the simple stenting in operator pre-decision. Right. So the, if you singing first view and second view, sometimes we requiring intravascular ultrasound and then we decide uh, upfront to stent versus provisional stenting. Absolutely. So I understand in a sun, medical center, you prefer a two-stand strategy when the ostium is severely diseased, but also you have a lesion length of at least 10 millimeters. Definitely, I see. Definitely. And also when, uh, when, we, when we look at the, at the main compare registry, what was the most frequent technique that you used for the distal left main? Yes, yeah, so, and uh, uh, that was uh, already performed in the 15 years ago in Korean data involving 12 mm -hmm, center right. and uh, 
uh, looking at the complex stenting technique and the crush technique was used uh, more than half of patient and the remaining portion is a T stand, a 20%, another 10%, 15% kissing stand. Now they don't use kissing stand and the uh, crush is most commonly right. used the two step technique. Right, right. All right, so now let, let's go ahead at the, the, the end points that you selected, but also the main result of the results of the main compare registry. So, and the, uh, the, it, that was uh, the initially we selected three uh, key components of the clinical end point, all cause of mortality, and the second is a composite of uh, death and QMI or stroke, it, that is a serious composite outcome. And the third is a target vessel revascularization that was consistent of a three year follow, five year follow, 10 year follow. And uh, looking at the main I result see. and the, yeah. Uh, so if I'm gonna summarize the main result, this is uh, the summarized well in central illustration. And uh, in comparison of the bypass surgery versus the drug delivering stand, Pipe surgery shows a lower mortality and serious composite outcome uh, compared to uh, with the drug loading stand beyond the five year for distal left main disease. Mm -hmm. However, for austere and sharp left main disease, and there was no difference uh, between pipe surgery and the uh, drug loading stand. Yeah, that's very important. So the osteum and the soft behaves better as opposed to the distal left main. And also you stratify the patients, the patients according to the syntax score in low, intermediate and high syntax score. Did you see any differences in the distal left main and the classification according to the syntax score? Yes, yeah, that is a very good, good question. And, uh, you know, uh, according to syntax score and the low, intermediate, high syntax total, we last year we already published in the main compare tenure sub study was published the Jack intervention. Uh, uh, looking at the result and uh, uh, PCI versus pipe surgery, overall result was comparable. Uh, the low risk and intermediate risk, but the high risk uh, is the bypass surgery was better. That was uh, consistent, even the left main involving distal left main complex disease. Right, right. So a very important observation is that beyond the five year time point and the very long term follow up, it looks like that those Kaplan Mayer curves, the survival curves diverge significantly. So Dr. Park, what is your main view on this? So long-term, always cabbage is superior to PCI? So I think that is the most important and interesting uh, uh, feature in this uh, manuscript. And the first, and uh, I think since uh, this study was an observational study, uh, which uh, interpretation mm -hmm. should right. be cautious, you know, on the basis of our observational study, we still don't have a strong confidence that uh, surgery is better than PCI for distal left main disease. You know, that was uh, well described in uh, editorial by Antonio Colombo, this manuscript in the, mm -hmm. Dr. Colombo is a writer editorial and the, the presence of distal left main disease should not be considered a dichotomous entity this is a frequently associated, you know, uh, more di diffuse disease in beyond the left main disease and diabetics and other clinical comorbidity. So we don't know still, and the uh, main result was driven uh, that uh, bypass surgery treat treatment effect was better than PCI, but there is some, a uh, lot of, uh, you know, unmeasured confound of the, I think uh, interpretation mm -hmm. should be cautious. Exactly. And also TVR. TVR, I mean, across the majority of the randomized trials and the registries remain the endpoint that differentiates PCI versus CABIT in favor of, of CABIT. So considering that we have reached uh, uh, you know, the optimum pharmacotherapy, but also very good devices with very thin struts, from your experience and your clinical practice, do you think, is there any factor that can be still improved in order to optimize PCI? Yeah, definitely. And uh, there is a, definitely some paradigm change uh, be, before 10 years and uh, nowadays. Uh, and uh, when the main compare register was performed at the time, 
routine and geographic follow was frequently performed. In, even in the main compare registry, routine and geographic follow performed more than half of patients. And that this uh, definitely uh, had led to increase of repeat revascularization owing to stand occlusive mm -hmm. reflex. And nowadays, uh, trend changes. We don't do routine angiographic follow up for the more. That would be, I think, uh, might uh, influence the rate of repeat revascularization. And second part, and the looking at the, the IPD meta analysis of a, a 19 random trial uh, published in JAG and the Gregston group, and the very rate uh, stand related event occurred beyond the a one year continue to five year, there is no plateau. Even stand related event is going up and continuously. Mm -hmm. That is true for non stand, the coronary, uh, coronary event is that is the same. There is a reason why we should uh, uh, emphasize on the, the guideline to get to the medical setup in the new approach, definitely, and uh, required to improve the long term outcome of the PCI and, the, for instance, the GDMT or the adherence. Also, we are available very nice drug uh, compared to 10 years ago. And, the, for instance, uh, statin and PCA K9 inhibitor and ani therapy and the SGL2 inhibitor and a lot of uh, new, you know, uh, the drug was developed, agents, that yeah. would be, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely important for secondary prevention for coronary or non-coronary event. Absolutely. So you have tremendous experience in this field and uh, following you no know, data from all those randomized trials from the Excel, from the 10 years of syntax, from the pre compat from the noble at five years, and now from the main compare at 10 years. Tell me, are you still in favor of PCI in the low and intermediate syntax score for left main interventions? Or what is your strategy? We want to know, for, especially from you. Yeah, definitely. The, my answer is very straightforward. Is uh, already defined the reason why I'm an interventional cardiologist. Uh, you know, uh, uh, our center is one of a, a pioneer center for left main PCI. Definitely, and the, on the basis of our long time experience as well as uh, accumulated evidence based medicine, uh, I have confidence PCI is definitely very nice and good alternative and good therapy comparable to bypass surgery in patient with a low and intermediate anatomical complexity. Uh, however, sometimes we see and uh, some patient has a very high risk of complexity and uh, high syntax score, something like that. At the time, mm -hmm. we should uh, have uh, some hot team discussion for considering a uh, patient risk factor and comorbidity, other things. And then we decide the final decision making uh, for PCI or bypass surgery. Dr. Park, thank you so much for being with us today and uh, for giving us such important insights about your study, the main compare registry at 10 years. And also I would like to thank our viewers and our readers for being with us today. And we will keep working on generating such insightful episodes for USC Journal and Radical Cardiology. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me.